Dr. Praminda Kalab Solik. Okay, this is, uh, you, you do look a bit different from earlier. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, yes. I've come specially, just, and I'm really excited to be here this evening in this amazing forum. In, in robot form. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, if any other speakers want any tips, that is how to make an entrance. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, uh, can I just check? Can you can you see everyone here? Yes, yes, I can. I'm I'm going to do a little whirl because I am so excited, and I'm going to turn around and see everyone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I, I I'll get on to your height, so I'm going to raise myself a bit. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm not even asking why this is happening. I'm just enjoying it. <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> you. So you, you, you're clearly enjoying this as well. I mean, you're in two places at once right now. You're you're here with us virtually, but you're somewhere else as well. How how does yes, that feel? Yes, and I'm in Ibiza. <laughs> okay. I'm, yeah. Wow! I'm, I'm used to being in two places. I'm used to being in two places as one. So I work in two cities, Bristol and Bath. And this telepresence robot is something we're exploring in our research to see how we can make more efficient use of our shrinking care workforce. And I'm going to uh, come out in front of you. I'm going to teleport myself from my beta to tell you more about assistive robotics. <laughs> so see you in a second. A wonderful stuff. Uh, now, can we have a huge round of applause for the robot? <laughs> she is actually here. Humans of the Royal Institution, uh, she'll be out in a moment. Please put your hands together again for the actual real life uh, Dr. Praminda Caleb <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, yes, it was a hard uh, troll from Ibiza, but arrived in one piece. <laughs> um, how many of you know of an older person who is starting to feel the struggles in terms of everyday activity due to aging? Put your hands up. Yes, mostly everyone. We are reaching a situation where by 2030, we are, have 4.8 million people over the age of 80. And unfortunately, by 2020, there'll be a shortage of 2 million care and health and social care workers across Europe. So my research is looking into how we can support the aging uh, process and ensure a high quality of life um, for everyone uh, using robotics. Um, assistive robotics offer the opportunity to ensure a personalized approach to living independently and aging healthily. Um, the key to this technology is the ability to be able to learn and adapt to the environment in which the technology is being used, but also the people who are using the technology. So before I move on, I'm going to give you a little review of what is emerging in this area from across the world. To start off with, the double telepresence robot that you just saw, we're exploring its use in order to be able to provide uh, expert healthcare uh, on a more frequent basis. So in terms of um, a carer being able to access and provide support for somebody who has uh, been discharged from hospital but needs 24-7 um, supervision. Uh, a unit like this in their home means that whenever they need help, somebody can be there for them. In Japan, they have been looking at developing robots to support transfers, so that is moving people from chairs into bed and vice versa. Usually two carers are needed for this job and one of the issues with this sort of support is that it damages carers' backs. So we're looking at um, technology in our lab and this is technology developed in Japan on how you can have one carer and a robotic system to assist people. Now, one of the interesting um, pieces of research is why does this robot look the way it does? And um, this is a key research area in human robotics interaction. And I can spend a whole series of lectures um, talking to you about this. 
um, but I won't today. Going on to this um, system, it's a Kinova Jaco robot arm. And as you can see, it's supporting this person who has um, a disability, a mobility disability, to be able to eat uh, by themselves. This can open up a whole array of um, opportunities and freedom for a person without having to wait or depend on somebody else. Um, and I've heard one of the best features of this um, is the ability to be able to scratch one's nose oneself. We also have um, additional type of robots. So in science fiction, you might have seen um, robots like the Robert, the lifting kind of robot. But these are exoskeletons. These are designed to support and provide physical support to carers. So um, strength for the hips and the back and supporting them in uh, providing um, lift uh, and mobility assistance themselves. They're actually being used by baggage handlers at airports at the moment um, to support and protect backs. And then we have Paro, which is a robotic seal. And um, this is um, actually designed more to behave like a nice purring cat. Um, and it's used um, to support people with dementia um, who get very anxious and distressed. So as you know, stroking a pet calms. Um, and one of the good things about this is not going to suddenly, when it feels it's had enough, stick its claws into you. Um, and then we have this. This is the savvy one uh, in the States. And it's used to deliver things uh, in hotels. Um, so imagine you've gone to your hotel room, changed into your pajamas, realized you've forgotten your toothbrush. Um, and then you can ring down. They'll send up the robot with your toothbrush. Um, and you don't worry, have to worry about whether you've gen been generous about tipping. <laughs> and then we have the robot vacuum cleaner, which quite a few of you might already have seen and, um, or even have in your homes. Um, and this particular one is a Dyson. Why I've included it under assistive technology is that it can support people with um, developing mobility difficulties to be able to keep their own homes clean. However, and this is a big however, in the real world, we find things like this. So what happened here was the robot had been programmed to come on at a particular time every day. And the robot didn't know that the puppy in the house hadn't been house trained. And the robot didn't know what was in the path. So it went around smearing things all over the house. And I was so taken by this that I wrote a little haiku. And so, <laughs> messy learning flops. And this is where we see robots come into their own. It's all about learning. Learning about the environment in which they are operating and finding out what's going on in the environment, both with the user and uh, puppy flops. I'm really lucky because I leave home to go to work, and I arrive home. So in the Bristol Robotics Lab, I've got my own second home, which is assisted living studio. And in this space, I'm able to explore and understand how and, uh, in, in, and what are the issues connected to developing robots that will function reliably and safely in realistic environments before we let them loose into the real world. And the way we do this, this whole house, is instrumented with a range of wireless sensors. Um, and um, these wireless sensors connect to these robots. So there's a Jayco arm we've got. We've actually, um, I've got a PhD student who's working on telecontrolling this robot arm. So uh, before we get to a system being completely autonomous, what we're going to see is people will be able to remotely offer help and support, just like I was able to come in here through um, the double, but maybe do jobs for people around the home. So imagine an arm on a mobile platform um, does all the cleaning and tidying up for you. Um, or you can do it in your lunch break from work. We've got wireless sensors, which are giving information about what's happening in that space um, around the robot. Um, and we've also got um, wireless sensors, which are giving information about the person themselves, um, heart rate, breathing, um, activity. Um, and, and I like to use um, 
technology that already exists there, why reinvent the wheel? So using um, technology like Fitbits, etc., and integrating them with the robots. All of this information can be provided to the person themselves or can go into um, providing support, um, which is then passed over to people in their care of services. Um, I'm going to show you a quick um, video, and I'm going to skip the next slide, which is uh, about how we use AI and machine learning things to be able to recognize activities and patterns of behavior. So a quick two-minute video to show you how the data from the sensors and this information about user activity can be used by a robot to provide support to somebody in a ma men medicine management scenario. So, you can see a wireless sensor connected to the drawer, and when that is opened, that information is transferred to a cloud computer, where, uh, which is analyzed, uh, but it's also available to the robot to know whether the person has remembered to take their medication at a given time. So Pepper, this is the robot in the video, needs to make sure it's safe and clear before it can start moving. And then Pepper has to find IC. And you can see there the status of the medicine drawer. So we're using a person to work collaboratively with the robot to be able to ensure that the machine vision um, results in a correct recognition, because this is quite a crucial aspect. Great. I can come from that. This is ibuprofen. Here are some information about ibuprofen. Please check the precaution before you use it. It may take a few seconds. So what happens next in this um, video is that that information uh, can be acquired from a database um, and then provided to the user in conjunction with their personal healthcare records. Um, so all of this um, is about being able to connect the sensors within the home with external sources of information. It's all about in providing interoperability between different um, types of record uh, systems and our health care and social care services. And I'm going to leave you with a vision uh, of where what's to come and how long it'll take us to get there. And the very good news is I'm assured of an exciting job for many years. And the other exciting bit of news is that this is a very multidisciplinary area, robotics, and it provides an opportunity for a whole range of skills, as well as new types of skills um, that we need to develop in order to ensure that we have this technology available to us. And my objective is to ensure that this technology is developed, which is effective and usable, but also is cognizant of ensuring user agency and autonomy autonomy and privacy. And um, if you would like further information, there is a white paper on social robotics in care, which I will encourage you to download and have a look at, uh, or please visit our website. Thank you. Thank you.